Hey there, and welcome to the channel. I'm Matt Mirage, and while normally I talk about large format photography on my Large Format Friday series, I wanted to share with you guys something really cool that is just about to come out, and if only there was a way to make it a little bit easier for me to digitize my sprockets. And fortunately, there is. My buddy Ethan Moses over at Cameradactyl has a Kickstarter out right now for this neat little product called the Cameradactyl Mongoose. You know, it's really hard to define what the mongoose is. Uh, I wouldn't call, go ahead and call it a scanner, I would call it more of a scanning assistant because the unit itself is really just there to aid the process of scanning. Let's take a look. The core of our mongoose is this unit right here. It's a two-piece system. If you're familiar with any of Ethan's work over at Cameradactyl, much of what Cameradactyl is about is 3D printed, open source, inexpensive, self-produced uh, equipment for photographers in general, but specifically film. I first got turned on to Ethan's stuff when he came out with the Cameradactyl OG around the end of 2018. I got a chance to test it out last year and it was so much fun. I loved the OG 4x5. I kind of took it as a personal challenge to see uh, if I could deal with a 4x5 with a fixed body and it was so much fun to shoot. I had a blast with it. I shot a lot of frames over at the uh, film photography Pydea that was hosted by The Darkroom out in California and it was, it was way more fun than I thought I would have. Like, yes, I still shoot 35, despite hyping nothing but large format all the time, I do still shoot 35. It's not my primary anymore, but I still handle a lot of it. And in my day-to-day -day at Midwest Photo, I run the black and white darkroom there, and I do black and white developing every week. So I still handle hundreds of rolls of film per month, and I have an opinion <laughs> on 35 millimeter scanning. It's not a good one, but I have an opinion about it, and anything that can make that easier, I am all for. So if you're just used to flatbed scanning, stick around. We're gonna go through uh, the setup of this, and I'm gonna show you some results that I achieved with the Mongoose and very little experience. So the Mongoose is not a standalone scanner. It's really a control box and something that's gonna pull the film through the sp sprockets and automate the process by triggering your camera after it detects the edges of frames. So other things that you're gonna need to be able to scan alongside the Mongoose, you're gonna need to have a consistent intensity light source, either a flash or an LED light box like the one I've got here, and you're also going to need some sort of digital camera that can be triggered uh, by the control box of the Mongoose. Uh, to date, the Mongoose currently supports Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji, and I believe some other cameras are coming soon. I told Ethan I was gonna be using a Sony because I wanted to see how much resolution I could get out of a single capture, and he sent along a Sony cable. So anybody that backs the Kickstarter will also get the cable that matches the camera that they request. Uh, Camera-wise, I did go kind of all out. I am using a Sony a7R IV, which is a whopping 60 megapixel sensor with a macro lens. Ethan recommends having a macro lens in like the 50 millimeter to 100 millimeter range is something that's gonna be able to get you very, very close to filling the frame with the film. The more you fill the frame with it, the less you're gonna to have to crop and post. And there's no control, this does not control the camera, it's literally just a firing mechanism. So this control box handles some of the timing, the amount of film it pulls or detects, and it triggers the camera manually. So. You can have the camera in either an aperture priority or a manual setting, whichever one you're comfortable with for automating this process. All right, let's get the unit set up. So I've got my camera leveled, I've got my light box on. I'm going to take my mongoose and the sticker's kind of indicating how I'm gonna lay it. Now, you can use a copy stand. I just have my camera up on a tripod. As long as I can get this thing pretty level uh, to the film plane, that's really gonna be the biggest factor here. And the control box, I just need that within eye shot of the rest of the device. And now I'm going to plug in my control box. So the control box has some ports on it. Uh, the ports that we're really gonna care about are these first three here. That's your power port. That's your camera control port with a 2.5 millimeter jack. And this first ethernet port is gonna connect the control box uh, to the advanced unit. So I'm gonna plug that in. 
I'm also gonna take my ethernet cord, plug that in, and hook that to my control unit. There's a port right here. There we go, we're hooked in. And now, let's fire it up. It's recommended you do your first fire up without having uh, a camera connected. So there's my little readout. Yellow is kind of our toggle button. It moves through the different modes and all of our other settings. The red's kind of your confirm button and the blue and green are different, are different option settings within here. I'm going to be working mainly in my automatic mode. Let's hook our control cable up to the camera. Okay, got that. Turn my digital camera on. I'm just gonna line this up. I've got the lens to manual focus because autofocus isn't really gonna be helping me too much here. Okay, I got a lot of, a lot of excess framing. So I'm gonna bring my tripod down a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna feed in some 35 millimeter Eastman double X that I've been shooting with my K1000. Been developing it in FPP D96. It is an absolutely awesome combo. So I'm just gonna pull this in until we hit the start of those little sprocket guides. And then I'm going to rotate my little control knob here to start jogging the film along. And that pulls my film along. I can also control the speed. I can make it go way faster increments and way slower increments as well. So that's like buzzing through the film. And then I can also have it just go one little bit at a time. When loading film, I recommend going slow and steady wins the race. Okay, so here's what makes the mongoose really cool. Once I have the start of my first frame a little bit into the film gate, but not quite all the way in, and I've got my camera aligned kind of left of center of this gate, I can start doing some really cool stuff. So I've got my, my film focused. I'm going to make sure I'm level. There we go. Re-leveled, focused on my film. I'm in automatic mode. I'm gonna hit my red button and it's going to start its automatic procedure. So it has little sensors on the inside of the gate and the outside of the gate, and it's reading those. And once it detects an edge, it starts triggering my camera. And when it does that, like that's it. We're automatic, folks. It's pulling a whole roll of film through, triggering my camera, the exposure is great. I'm getting, after the crop, I'm getting about 50 some megapixels of total resolution. And yeah, while I'm talking, it's just rolling through the film. This is infinitely faster than anything I could be doing with a scanner or even a manual moving apparatus. I don't know about you, but this is, this is pretty easy. Still going strong, haven't missed a frame yet. Still looking good. All right, let's see. Oh, we got a few extras there. And then once we're at the end of the roll, it says end of roll. So another mode that has the potential to be even speedier than automatic mode is fast mode. When you're in fast mode, you measure the diff distance between the frames by setting in points and out points for a number of frames uh, that you set. In the case of this one, I'm doing five frames at a time, so I'm going to hit my green and blue buttons. I'm gonna set my in point for my first frame, which is nice right there. So that's my in, and then I'm gonna jog through, and I'm going to find my fifth frame. So that's frame two, frame three, frame four, 
frame five. Mark my out for that. And then I'm gonna reset it by hitting the red. There we go, we're at frame run and go. One thing that's very important in setting on this that I've, uh, I've kind of learned the hard way after reading the manual and watching Ethan's instructional videos is you have to figure out your trigger interval. So this is how long the box is pulsing and telling the camera to go ahead and fire. If the interval's too short, it will, won't trigger the camera, and if it's too long, it'll trigger multiple, uh, multiple frames. So you gotta kind of find the sweet spot for that, and each camera manufacturer is a little bit different. And once you have that, you also need your delay. This frame delay is based on the amount of time you're setting for your shutter speed on your unit, as well as how long it's gonna wait between uh, pulling the next frame and firing. So this is gonna be a combination of that first millisecond plus the shutter speed, and then uh, before it pulls again. So 250 milliseconds, that's a quarter second. That's still really fast. Even with this delay on there, I can still burn through this 24 exposure roll in a little over a minute, which is wicked fast. So we've covered some of the overview features. I've demonstrated the automatic mode and the fast mode. And yes, you can jog it manually, but it kind of has its best use when you can walk away from the unit. So who is this for? How has it performed? And is this something I would buy? Let's start with who this scanner is for, or this apparatus is for. If you're somebody that owns a DSLR or mirrorless camera that has a really effective live view and capture system that's supported by this, I would say go for it. You're already most of the way there. I'd recommend having a camera with more than 30 megapixels worth of resolution. 24 megapixel might be fine, but you're kind of like six of one, half dozen of the other with equivalent resolution you can get to the Epson. But even with a lower res capture than 24 megapixel, I've captured with stuff that's at 18 megapixel, like a little Canon Rebel. And even those files tend to have a little bit more usable range in them than something right off of the Epson scanner. So single capture is definitely already there with a large number of cameras. If you have a mirrorless camera that's over 30 megapixels, now you're getting the best of what this can offer because it's automating the process. Even jogging through some rolls of film manually, the production time to go through those rolls of film versus loading, cleaning, scanning, loading, cleaning, scanning, you're cutting that time by half at the slowest and by 70, 80% uh, at the fastest. That's a huge difference in time. And that's even considering having to bring these into Lightroom or Capture One and do your crop and adjust workflow. It's just so much cleaner. Because the gate pulls the film through very, very cleanly, there's no worries about film buckling or anything. And a lot of times, this film is coming right out of the drying cabinet and into this scanning device. So there's very little opportunities for it to get dirty and dusty, which is huge if you have people with long hair or pets in your household, that really helps. Right now, this unit is on Kickstarter for $550 for backers. And once it hits retail pricing, I believe it's gonna be at $700. That's a very large amount considering what you're getting for it, but you're also speeding up your time incredibly so. So I think anybody that's shooting more than five rolls of film, 35 millimeter per month, you could really benefit from this. If you're somebody that's running a small lab where you're doing rolls of film for customers and you're just there kind of babying the scanner the whole time, this could be a really easy way to enhance your workflow, to be able to do more rolls of film in the same amount of time or dramatically decrease the amount of time you're watching those scans go through. In a production environment, I think that's where this unit really, really excels. I was super pleased with the scans I was able to do with this and everybody that I showed scans for or volunteered to do film for was thrilled with their scans. They're like, wow, did you get a new scanner? And a lot of times I didn't tell them what I was using this for. And they were really pleasantly surprised. And when I showed them the unit, they were like, whoa, where can I get one of these? Is it all butterflies and rainbows? Mm, no, there is some setup. This is a unit that you really need to, <laughs> really need to comb through the instructions. I did a once over with the manual as well as watched Ethan's two videos, his setup and his how-to video. They're each about 10 minutes long, and they were very informative on getting me to understand the process of how this is capturing. 
If you're somebody that just wants to take it out of the box and try to get it to work with little experience, you may run into some hiccups. I did try that and I hit a wall pretty quickly. But I think for what you're getting, there's just nothing else out there that does this. So what about this versus a scanner? You know, you can go online and buy an Epson V600, but you would be taking three to four times longer to run film through a V600 and you're gonna hit a resolution limit very, very quickly. You're gonna have a little bit less usable range and sharpness could be an issue from frame to frame. Here we're using a camera that we can check our focus manually and if we have live view, we know what we're getting before we get it. So this unit has a very high ceiling on it, but it requires some things. It's gonna require a little bit of camera knowledge. We can run it in aperture priority mode, that runs pretty well. I prefer manual mode with this, but if you are running other people's film where maybe there's some kind of like okay exposures, maybe it's a little too thin or a little bit too dense, there will be some wiggling around with exposure that you need to do. But you'll also need to play around with the box a little bit and you're programming some things. I didn't mind that process because once I got it to get into that, automatic mode was a breeze. The biggest hiccups I think right now uh, with the unit are, you know, it's outward appearance. It's a 3D printed box and it's very obviously 3D printed. But if that's all, like, I'd, it's not like I walk around with a, with a camera strap and my scanner attached to it. So it's not something that it needs to look super perfect. I think there's a lot of, a lot of great things going on here with the unit. I myself don't shoot enough 35 millimeter to justify this unit, but that doesn't mean I'm not getting this unit. I'm still gonna be getting this unit because of what it does for a production environment. So where I work at Midwest Photo, so we run dual Epson V850s and it takes a long time to go through some rolls of film. We could spend thousands of dollars more on a higher end frontier, but we are running into that diminishing returns with parts and service on those higher end scanners. If you're at a camera store, we have access to these cameras, it's a no-brainer. This is a great way to run through a lot of rolls of film very, very efficiently. So let's talk films that I've run through. I've run through kind of your standard Ilford and Kodak films. I've run through funky films like the Eastman Double X from FPP. I've also run through really thin pet-based films uh, like Roly R25, Roly Infrared, and uh, some Efke films. And all of them went through splendidly. I did notice the really thin base and the super transparent Roly films tend to uh, be easy to trigger the sensitivity of the automated mode. So I needed to turn down the sensitivity of the box to get it to pull through. But that was like 20 seconds of troubleshooting, like literally just toggling through the menu, dialing the sensitivity down, and I was back in business with the unit. So any of the hiccups that I've hit with the unit were really just my lack of experience with it. But even in that, I've had this unit in my possession less than a week, and I've already scanned more rolls of film in that time than I've done in the last six months. That's a powerful response to a device that makes things easier. So if the reason you're not shooting 35 is because you can't digitize it effectively, check out the Mongoose. So that's gonna do it for me and the Mongoose here. If you have any other questions about the operation of this, I'll do my best to field those. Otherwise, I may have to refer you to Ethan over at Cameradactyl. But if you have any big questions about it, drop them down below in the comments, or you can also shoot me a long format question to largeformatquestions at gmail.com. I know that's the email I use for this channel. This isn't large format, so just put Mongoose in the title so I know it's not from Large Format Fridays and I'll do my best to answer it. If you wanna check this out and back it on Kickstarter, there's nine days left, so go and support Ethan and his really awesome 3D printed, self-made project devices like this. It is so cool and I'm just really excited that people are making their own solutions. Like there's all this aged hardware in the world of film photography. None of the big names are stepping up to the plate and we have guys like Ethan that are innovating and truly making new products that are gonna help us continue film photography. So we definitely wanna show love and support to people that are doing that. Thanks again for stopping by today. This was a bit of a special review. Thanks to Ethan over at Camera Dactyl for making this product, giving me a, pr a prototype model that I can talk about here on the channel and share with you guys and don't worry, Large Format Friday is not going anywhere. We're still gonna roll the regular Friday shows. So if you like this, let me know what you think. I, I wouldn't be against talking about more common film stuff, but Large Format is my passion, it's what I love to do, but I still do shoot 
film of all shapes and sizes, uh, except APS. We don't talk about APS here on the channel. Anyway, we'll catch you next time and see you on Friday for Large Format Fridays.